Hello everyone, today we're going to be learning how to measure the concentration and purity of a plasma DNA sample like you would get from a mini prep. In our lab we use an Epidor file photometer for this because it's simple, easy, and doesn't require the preparation of standard curves to get reasonably accurate results. So first we're going to begin by cleaning off our tray cell cuvette which we've got here. You want to be very careful with that because it's extremely expensive so you don't want to drop it or knock it over. We're going to clean that with a Kim wipe dampened with RO water. We'll gently clean the glass surface. So that tray there, that's where DNA is going to go. Try that off. And this is a mirror that will reflect the light back down through the device. You want to clean that off as well. Okay. So before we measure our DNA, we need to blank it with water. Ideally, you want to use the same water that you used to actually prepare your DNA sample. Um, so that's what I have in this bottle here. You want to use nuclease-free water for this purpose. In our lab, we use autoclaved millicue water, and that should be good enough. So because this is theoretically sterile water, and it's the water that I use to prepare all of my plasmid samples, I'm going to clean off my pipette before I stick it in there. So again, I'm going to take a Kim wipe, Take a little bit of 70% ethanol and clean off my pipette barrel before I stick it down into the water. Or not into the water, into the bottle. Take pipette tip and I'm going to take 5 microliters of sterile water. And I'm going to dispense that out onto the surface of the tray. There we go. I'll put the mirror on, gently on there. Okay, so then I'm, I'm going to insert that into the biophotometer. Um, you want to be consistent in the direction it, or that you put in the cuvette. So I try to just put the text facing towards me all the time. It doesn't really matter. You can see that mirror there. Actually, we should clean that off as well to make sure that there's no grease or, uh, or dust on there. Um, that, that glass window there, that's what the light's going to pass through. As long as it's in the, for, in the you know, oriented this way, you're going to be fine. Just try to be consistent. Okay, so when you put that in the machine, you want to push it all the way down. Otherwise, no light will be able to pass through the aluminum body. We're going to turn on the biophotometer. There's a switch in the back here. So we're going to press that. Okay. And the biophotometer looks like it's already on the DNA setting. If it wasn't, so if it was on RNA, you could just press DNA to get back to that. We have three different settings here, DSDNA for double-stranded DNA, SSDNA for single-stranded DNA, and oligo-DNA, obviously, for small uh, oligonucleotides. So we're measuring a plasmid sample today, so we want to select the double-stranded DNA option. So we'll press Enter to do that. Okay, and we're blanking it, so we press blank. It's worth noting that this uh, biophotometer operates using a xenon flash lamp, so it doesn't really require any time to warm up. So just to make sure that the blank worked properly, we're going to press sample now. We should see close to zero for our DNA concentration. And that is indeed what we see. Okay, so now we're going to dry off our tray cell and we're going to uh, add a DNA sample to the top. So there we are. Just dry off that water very gently. So we always want to be very careful to make sure that there's no dust left behind from the Kim wipe. That's another reason for working under the flame here. Uh, we want to avoid having any dust settling into our DNA sample or onto the tray because that can really impact our measurement and dust contains nucleases so it can degrade your sample. So these look pretty good. So again I'm going to take a 5 microliter sample. The volume that you take really depends on how uh, well preserved the hydrophobic coating is on the surface of your uh, tray there. So you may have to add more. You just want to make sure that there's a complete bridge of aqueous solution between that glass mirror there, or that glass uh, tray there, and the mirror on the cap. So again, I'm going to take a 5 microliter sample. So one thing to bear in mind is that if you've done a glass milk prep like I have here, you want to make sure that your silica is spun down really, really well, because even the presence of a very small quantity of uh, silica particles will really negatively impact your measurement. Uh, the light scattering will give you uh, a completely nonsensical reading. 
Okay, so I'm going to dispense that out onto the surface of the tray. Again, making sure that the text is facing towards me, pushing it all the way down, and press sample. Okay, so we see 165 nanograms per microliter. That's the concentration. As for our purity, we're really interested in this number here, 1.85 for the 260 over 280 reading. So that 260 over 280 is the ratio of the absorbance at 260 nanometers to the absorbance at 280 nanometers. Um, for pure DNA, you expect a 260 over 280 of about 1.8. Pure RNA, you expect a 260 over 280 of about 2.0. Uh, values lower than 1.8 typically indicate protein contamination. Uh, so this 1.85 is pretty good. Uh, all right, so we will record that later. But for now, I'm going to uh, clean off my cuvette again. Throw that away. I'll get a new Kim wipe here. So again, dampen that with RO water. Clean off the lid and the tray. Those are dry. And then we'll put that back in the case. And now we just have to turn off the biophotometer and turn off our flame, and then we're done. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.